Good afternoon, everybody. It's Jason Fine here with another episode of How to Speak Maintenance. I'm really excited today. We have a couple great uh, guest speakers. Uh, of course, we have Becca with us as always. So she's going to help us uh, keep this moving along. But I also have Christy Sanchez with us. So welcome to the call. Hi. I, uh, yeah, Christy uh, has uh, a lot of great experience. She's the owner of Magic Make Readies. So, uh, Christy, why don't you tell everybody about your experience in the industry and and uh, and what you're doing? Absolutely. So, I have over 25 years of experience with the Primal Pro leasing, as everybody does, I think, on that side. I worked my way up. I worked for some large companies like Gables and uh, Riverstone. I was the vice president at Alliance, and then I went most recently to a smaller company, Bainbridge, out of and ran the East Coast. They're out of Florida, and then I took a leap and came over to the supplier side and became owner or co-owner of Austin Magic Make Readies. So we are a one-source supplier um, of Make Ready interns in Austin. So I have definitely a new perspective on this side of it than what I had on the management piece. Wow, that's awesome. Sounds like you have a lot of experience in the industry, and, and that's really cool that you were able to make that switch over. I, I, it's good to hear those those stories about, you know, the new adventures you're taking. So, And then we have Scott Heffernan. Scott, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I've been in the industry about 18 years. Um, fortunate to have only worked for two companies. We, was with Post Properties for 11 years, and then came over uh, recently, about seven years ago, and it, with Graystar, um, kind of came a little bit backwards. I was on the general contractor side before and then made the transition into multifamily, uh, I guess primarily because, you know, multifamily is one of those industries that no one knows about and you don't know it till you're here. Uh, been a great journey. Uh, started uh, as a make ready, came up through make ready tech assistant service supervisor. And then of course, you know, the corporate role I have now. So I'm really passionate about today's topic because I've seen it, I've lived it. Um, watched how our technology has changed over the years and how it's helped us become more efficient. So this should be a fun conversation to talk through and how things have changed and where we're headed. Yeah, no, I, I'm really excited about this one as well. It sounds like all of us have had about the same amount of experience, you know, 15 plus years, and, and which takes us back to the, the day of the dry erase board and <laughs> how, how we were so reliant on the dry erase board. And, and in our conversations before this, it was great to hear your story. So I, I'm excited to, to share it with everybody else. So, you know, how, how do we use dry erase boards in the past? I mean, what, what did you guys use to see uh, dry erase boards being used for? I, I mean, essentially, we used them for everything in the beginning. We had a dry erase board for make ready. We had a dry erase board for special projects. We had another dry erase board for what parts needed to be ordered. You name it. I mean, we had dry erase boards in the shop, in the leasing office. They were scattered throughout the property so that we could track or try and efficiently track what we were doing. And in hindsight, it was probably the least efficient method we could have been using. Looks like It looks like Becca still has one in her office there. <laughs> <laughs> she does, I think. Uh, we do, uh, but it's empty. But it's empty. Uh, so we'll go with that. That's good. <laughs> We Crazy. might have to remove it. Uh, same thing here, you know, going back and thinking back to that time and even, you know, visiting sites today, you know, you put your cell units up there and your specials and what you're trying to target or your team goals. Um, my husband was in maintenance and I asked him and he was like, we'd put our favorite lunch spots on there. I mean, it was like, a, you know, where you go for everything. So it definitely um, was utilized quite a bit back in the day for, um, anything for office or, or um, maintenance. Yeah, I mean, and same, same from my experience as well. I remember we used to have a, a dry erase board that had training on it. So you could be able to track the classes that you had to take over the past, the next couple of months. And, and you can be able to sit there and put little check marks in it. And, and all, all of our stories about why we use dry erase boards make sense. If you think about it, I mean, the technology wasn't there. They, we didn't have the, the different uh, platforms that we have today. Smartphones as well, right? Back in, I remember when I first started in 2001, I mean, it was, you didn't have smartphones. Phones just did one thing, they called, right? <laughs> and then you, if you were fancy enough, you were able to, to text somebody else, so. But hey, back, back on the whiteboard, 
you had to have the specific colors. Did y'all have the person on your team who wanted to make sure like you only use red for this or black for this? So that was like as high tech as we got back then. <laughs> before oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the 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 least is in, the least incentive for the availability board, right? But if you think about it, I mean everybody had to get up from where they were to go to that board to see what their next step was or or to see what the next turnover was. And I think that's where we lose productivity now. For some of our properties, we still hold on to that and we're still utilizing the dry erase board. And I've seen it myself for you know many years, I'll be sitting there talking to a service manager or working with a team on a project and you see somebody come into the shop and look at the dry erase board and you wonder what they're looking at. But you know that it's if they drove from one side of a garden style property, that, that probably took what, 30 minutes, 20 minutes? I mean golf carts aren't that fast. So usually it takes a good 20, 30 minutes to get across the property and then walk in the office and see what's going on. So, you know, what sort of a technology are you guys seeing out there that we're utilizing for, uh, you know, organizing our days? I mean, I, besides like Google Drive or something, Christy, what do, what do you use to keep yourself organized? You know, so Whenever I was on the management side, we used Yardi quite a bit. And so Yardi had some tools that we utilized in the site um, for pictures and documentation. I'm a big um, fan of, and of course, I'm drawing a blank site so audit pro, mm -hmm. um, a great way to, and, and we still utilize that um, just in pictures to our clients when we're pre-walking units. There is software out there for like my side of the business on the contractor side um, you know, to, to schedule out what we do. So, you know, we utilize that. Um, I've also utilized teams. I have one of my old regionals who would, um, have all of his make ready's in teams. And so it was great. I had access to the folder. He had access for all of his sites. And so that worked out really well for us. That's great. Scott, what are you seeing out there? You know, it, being a larger management company, we use some of the big ones, MRI, Yardi, um, one site are, the ones that come to mind the most. But, you know, in other conversations, we talked about some of those companies that might not be able to utilize the big big ticket um, softwares that others use. Um, and a software I've used recently is, is Google Sheets. Uh, Google Sheets works just like an Excel spreadsheet. Um, it can be shared with multiple team members. It can be updated live. So those properties that don't have that access to bigger stuff can still be use it, utilize it as their make ready board um, or whatever we normally use that dry erase board for the technologies there. It's free. Um, and guys can, well, the whole team really can utilize it. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, there's large operators, the REITs of the world that, that probably have more capital to be able to spend on technology. And, and then you have some of these smaller mom and pop companies. And, and it's important that they realize that all of these options are out there. Google Docs, great, great example. It's collaborative. Everybody can work in the same document together. And, you know, Christy, you had mentioned, you know, a lot of times, sometimes the, uh, uh, what is it, the maintenance supervisor isn't typically the one that's scheduling the turn. So you, you, your team shows up to a property to find out what work needs to be done. And, and there's kind of chaos sometimes if it's not organized, right? Right. Yeah, I, I've been really surprised. I feel like there's a shift with probably, you know, staffing shortages and maybe just, you know, the teams are out in the field and working on ACs. And so we work a ton with assistant managers and they have really been driving, at least in Austin, a lot of sites we work with, the make ready scheduling. It's a little simpler because they're calling us and we're one supplier, but sometimes they may utilize, we don't do carpet, you know, another vendor there. And so with that, you know, if we're following up with a lead tech and he's out in the field, you know, and does not have access to that or the board, it does slow it down. Or, you know, if my teams are asking or trying to confirm something and it's on the board, it, it makes it a little bit challenging. So I'm noticing a lot more hands kind of in that piece of the business at this point. And I, I'm certain it has to do with just the demands on the site and, and staffing levels we're seeing with employment shortages. But yeah, well, that's what we're running across. If you think about it, this is really what the part, what this um, Facebook Live episode is really about, or this series, How to Speak Maintenance, is how can we show the office staff and other people on property and, you know, teammates what maintenance is doing and the importance of the value of it. 
and how can them, how can they look, if they are able to learn a little bit of how to speak maintenance, they can make their job easier and the job of the maintenance teams easier as well. And they can have a better job working relationships and, you know, in the end, better serve the resident. So it seems like there's a lot of things in this episode talking not just about the dry erase board or the whiteboard, but about how can we communicate better and how can we use technology to be more productive and you know, can, and have better communication. So I think that you're um, noticing about the assistant managers being more involved in that process really speaks to why we're here. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. Scott, what are you, what are you finding on site? Are you, is, is it typically one person that's scheduling all of the turns and all of the projects and then they're the ones communicating with the vendors or is there definitely a need that you're seeing as well for the office and the maintenance team to have have a collaborative dashboard where they can yep. be able to, to monitor projects. No, I completely agree. Having that collaborative dashboard is a must because different teams on different size properties, different style properties do things very different. In some cases, the service supervisor is scheduling all of the turns, all of the vendors. In other cases, it's an assistant manager or leasing manager. So that, that role really falls on different people and depending on the demand, different people at different times. So there is, there's a huge communication problem or potential communication problem with that whiteboard because who's updating it? Who's responsible for it this week? Um, did we transpose a date when we put it on there? We've all lived the, you know, the missing move-in where someone's come to move in and the date's wrong in the whiteboard and you know it's correct in the property management software. So why are we still using the whiteboard? I mean, we're essentially, we have the technology in place, but we have yet to kind of rip off that band-aid and say, okay, it's here, it's in place, let's start using it um, to help us become more efficient. Agreed. If there's one person that's maintaining the dry erase board or the information and nobody else has access to it and that person goes on vacation, I can only imagine the chaos that it, it, it causes. And then if you're a vendor and you're showing up and time is important to you and you're trying to you know, get as many apartments turned as possible, I can imagine that causes a lot of disturbance to your business as well as the property. So, uh, you know, I, I always like to also equate, you know, think about my experiences as a consumer. So when I call and I try to find out if my, my truck in the shop is, is going to be done soon and I get somebody on the phone and I say, Hey, my name's Jason. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking, you know, want to find out when my truck's going to be done. And, and they say, uh, well, let me go check with somebody. I'll call you back. That's kind of frustrating and aggravating to me, and especially if they don't call me back again, right? Whereas if I call somebody and they say, let me open up the system real quick and see, oh, it looks like uh, Tim's working on your car right now. It's going to be done by two. He's just got these parts. Same thing in our industry. If you're a vendor and you're calling up and saying, hey, I'm scheduled to come and paint an apartment, Christy, I'm sure that you, you don't want that delay. You want to be able to you know, get the information and, and make a business decision as quickly as possible. I think yesterday you mentioned um, by the end of the day, like if somebody hasn't responded back, it causes a, dis a disturbance to you, right? Christy? Yeah, you know, one thing is a lot of the suppliers are moving fast and so and booking up. And so, you know, if you don't have access to your board and, you know, your maintenance out in the field and, and handling it all and you don't call until the end of the day, you're maybe not going to be able to get in for 24, 48 hours or so, which has a big implication on, you know, potentially a move-in and people have had to push move-in dates. Or if you use multiple suppliers and one hits a road bump and, you know, can't come in and then you have to push others, it takes, you know, what may have been a two-day turn to a four-day turn or, or whatnot. So, you know, we're seeing that quite a bit, I think, too, with, you know, some of the other, um, suppliers carpeting and paint challenges that we've all run into, um, supply shortages, it also has a big trickle effect on the turn process. And so really kind of being ahead of it and scheduling early and quickly um, is key and will obviously, you know, provide hopefully more income to your property because you're able to get somebody in sooner. Vacancy loss has a big impact on vacancy loss. And are we saying that the dry erase board will add more vacancy loss to your team? Is that what, is that what we just said? <laughs> it's what we're alluding to, absolutely. Absolutely, <laughs> yep. 
Well, and confusion. And, and like you said earlier, sometimes the information's not correct. You know, a move in date's changed. Maybe it's moved up two days. And so, you know, you don't necessarily have it memorized. So there's no flag for that. What if you read it wrong? Everybody's handwriting's a little different. I'm probably one of the worst at <laughs> handwriting. So may not interpret what I put. Um, you know, there's so many challenges that come with that. Um, there's accountability challenges. You know, if you have somebody that goes and changes the information and it's incorrect, you know, that is another challenge that we're up against. And there's no way to truly track who was the one who did that. So, yeah, a dry erase board, I think, needs to go out the door. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And just the fact that we have the technologies there, we're using it to track the turn already. It's part of the property management software in most cases. We're taking the information from our computer. Someone is taking the time to put it on the wall so that then someone else can update it on the wall. So that we can then take it off of the wall and put it back into the computer. We're, it's a huge time suck and we're just wasting time with the dry erase board. It's time to you know, let bygones be bygones. Let's move on, use the technology we have so that we can be more effective. Yeah. Scott, yesterday you were mentioning that you, uh, if you're working for a fee management company and the owner might not have the capital dollars to be able to invest in some of these technologies, it, that can kind of be a challenge as well. I mean, can you talk a little bit about the, the tools and, and what you've seen some of these sure. management companies use? Sure, so absolutely. We, we, of course, have several different platforms that we use. And now that we've gone mobile, we're using mobile devices for work orders, for tracking turns, for doing all of our, you know, preventative and scheduled maintenance items, for all of our inspections, you know, eliminating the dry erase board, eliminating all those binders. Um, and it's great because now information is at our fingertips when we need it. But getting those devices is sometimes difficult. You know, you go to an owner and say, hey, I need five iPads for my on-site staff. And oftentimes, you know, they see that as, a, you know, a fairly big capital investment that they're not willing, willing to do. But given the technology is there and we've got our smartphones in many cases, there's ways to work around that. Most of our teams, they're already on Facebook. They're doing social media. They're capable of doing it. Um, we just need to make sure that they can utilize the tools that they have uh, to get out there and, and do what we need. Yeah, I like that. I also like, I was thinking about it more last night and a lot of our suppliers, you know, their websites and their portals, they, you can use their tools as well to track inventory or to be able to place part orders. You know, it's, it's, we're getting more and more to the point where technology is touching everything that we're doing. And if, if you just embrace it and we figure out how to use it in our daily lives, it's, it's going to actually help us out. So, um, you know, one of the things that I always think about was one time I walked in an office and there was a, a dry erase board and so it looked like somebody had smudged, you know, part of it. And I asked the supervisor, I said, hey, what happens if somebody accidentally bumps up against this? And I can only imagine the chaos it would, it would cause if the whole turn schedule was on the dry erase board. So. I'm sure you guys have seen that in your past, right? I have. And my favorite is too, when you have the assistant or the manager who thinks that they're not doing it right and they go start all over, when, especially it's when they're on vacation or, or out and they come back and it's like, <laughs> oh my goodness, what happened? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That happens often. Christy, as far as time management, you were, you made a comment about district managers and having to request information, whereas if it's readily available, it, you, you actually save your team a lot of time and effort as well. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so we've seen just, again, a shift, uh, you know, here at least in Austin, where you have no maintenance on site, and you have a manager who's helping handle this, or a system, or even a regional. I mean, I've had, you know, regional schedule work, and so, you know, they're not necessarily at the site. It's budget season right now. A lot of times people are working at their corporate office or working from home, even property managers on the budget. And so, you know, I think not being able to access that and call your leasing staff or whoever's in the office to go look at the whiteboard is very inefficient. So if you do have access, you know, our team works, we do not have an office 100% remote. And so everything we do is digital to keep us all on the same page. And it makes it, you know, again, that much more efficient that we're looking at things immediately. So, but we again, deal with people all the time working from home or working remote 
you know, working at their corporate office. And so it, it definitely is a challenge not being able to get that immediate answer. Um, it, it slows down everything when you can't get what you need when, when you need it. So. so Scott said earlier, you got to rip off the Band-Aid. So what's it going to take? Because Jason and Scott both sit on TAAEF Maintenance Council, and I think it was universally agreed that the dry erase board's got to go. But is Jason need to go in and take them down off the walls of, you know, um, at properties? What What's going to change this? What, you know? I, I think that responsibility is back on us. We need to make sure that we're providing the training to the team so that they have it. You know, we've given them the tools, essentially, with having all of the, the mobile platforms out there. But unless we start providing the additional training, giving them those tools so that they can feel comfortable using it, they're not going to. You know, change is always something people resist, no matter what it is. Change even for the better. It's no one's happy about it. Um, and it takes, especially guys in our industry, a little, little bit of extra time to come, come around. And say so we've rolled out some new um, software with my guys, and it took about a year uh, for them, for everyone to get on board. And now that they're there, they've seen the light, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel. And like, wow, I can't believe how easy this is. I used to have all of these binders and all of these clipboards and all of this mess everywhere. Now I have my iPad and everything is stored there. And it works not only to help their efficiency, but mine. I can check in on that property from my PC. I can check in on my entire portfolio in a day where it would take me forever to drive from site to site to site to see it. So having... You know, the, the training piece, it, it, it's, I guess, the, the stepping stone to get us where we need to be so that everyone at, at every level of our business can be more efficient. And I'll say, too, there's a lot of great information when it comes to technology, even on YouTube. You know, when I'm looking to try to figure out something in Office, a lot of times I can just see, Google it or YouTube it and really you can, you know, do something as basic as that to kind of work on your skills or maybe what you're having a challenge with, um, whether it's Teams or, you know, SharePoint or, you know, Excel. Yeah. Guilty of, of Googling how to fix something in Excel. Been there. Oh. Yeah, we're, we're all getting accustomed to uh, data needing to be readily available and being available quickly. And that's even more reason why information needs to be in a centralized location where we can be able to get to it quickly and everybody can get to it. And you don't have to get up and go to the shop or go to a, an office and, and see what's going on. So I, I like what we're talking about as far as training is concerned. You know, sometimes uh, some of our maintenance employees will, will not want to start the, the training process because they see it as it's too long. There's too long of a process. It's going to take a long time and I don't have a lot of time, and it, which is funny. I think we're, we're trying to treat a symptom here. We're, we're not utilizing time properly. And then in the, in the end, it's stopping me from doing training to be able to be more efficient. So it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. So training is definitely another one of my passions which is the one of the next calls that we're gonna actually do. I think Becca's back on with us. Yeah. So we're, um, our next call is gonna be about training. We're gonna have some other guest hosts and we're gonna talk about training. You know, I, I love these conversations. You know, in the end, I think each one that we've had so far, we've always realized that it's just realizing the impact that each team has on each other, how the office has an impact on maintenance and how maintenance has an impact on the office. And once you start to realize that, and you start to realize that there's better ways to communicate or better ways to be able to track our information, then we start to finally dig in and find new tools or new ways to be able to track it. So Scott, Christy, do you guys have any other pieces of advice or, or little tidbits that you'd like to share? I would just say from kind of my operations background and working with regionals and managers and seeing over the years, training is key. And I know that it's really easy when you're short staffed and you have a maintenance guy who's scheduled to go to training to pull them out and have them on your community. And, and truly in the long run to give up a couple hours is going to save your property so much time and allow them to be way more efficient. Um, in the long run. So sometimes you just have to make that tough decision and kind of manage through it, but it really does pay off. And especially when it comes to things like technology, 
Um, all else spells, ask our kids, our grandkids. They know way more about it than we do. <laughs> uh, so you could get trained that way. But no, it, it's taken the time. I know sometimes it's hard when we're short staffed, but I would encourage, you know, any managers, regional site teams out there, um, please carve out that time for your maintenance team. They need it. And in the long run, it's going to save all of y'all money and time and efficiencies. So. And probably a happier employee as well. Absolutely. And more valued. Yep. Scott, any other, anything last, any last words on the whiteboard that you'd like to, to add? On the whiteboard, not so much, but yes, on the training aspect, I think um, as, as with you, it is a passion of mine and not only for efficiency factors, but to increase the professionalism of what we do. You know, so many of the guys out there, you know, feel undervalued and don't feel that, that they get the you know, the, the notice that they deserve. And I think helping them, giving them these tools to be more efficient and be uh, more effective at what they do is going to elevate them. Uh, it's going to help those outside of the industry and those that they work for to look at them and realize how professional they really are. I mean, they do have an amazing skill set already. Yeah. Adding the technology piece is only going to help them grow. Yeah. Cool. As we continue to build properties and communities with uh, smart thermostats and smart refrigerators and, and smart locks. I mean, it's going to get more and more to the point where our, our teams need to embrace technology. So it's, it's going to be interesting to watch our everything change. Christy and Scott, I really appreciate your time. Becca, do you uh, have any last minute questions or um, things you'd like to add? Sure. Um you know, just last week, TAAEF, together with the El Paso Apartment Association, launched a course, a maintenance cor course, that where the attendees will come out with their CAMT pro provisional CAMT designation. Um, and so, and these are these are individuals who are exiting service from the U.S. Army, and they have a period of time while they're exiting service to take courses to be able to find a new career and get training for a new career. And so. We're really excited to have this class uh, finally happen. It's been in the works for a long time. So I wanted to ask you all, what's your advice for someone new coming into the industry in maintenance, but just generally, what's your best advice for someone new and looking to um, be part of the industry? Scott, you want to take it? Scott? You know, I, I think be patient. There is so little um, put in place to help guys get job ready to be in, in our industry. You know, it's an industry that none of us really ever realized was here until we were here. And, and we get a lot of guys in the entry level position that are ready to move and move quick. You know, they want to be a service supervisor tomorrow. Um, my, my best advice is be patient, um, embrace all of the training that's out there and to, to build your career because this can be a lifelong career that you can, you can grow and support your family, put your kids through college. Um, it's there and it's available. Uh, just be patient and, and take those steps to learn. I mean, we got here by working ourselves through and it's available to anyone that's willing. Christy? Yeah, I would say just generally speaking, I've always said, you know, being on site was one of my favorite positions. It's like you're running your own company and what a privilege to go run, you know, 20, $30 million asset uh, for a client. And so, and really the people on site are the ones who have that impact. Um, coming into it, I would say, yes, be patient. You sometimes get thrown in, uh, but know that it takes time and you will learn and really find your, you know, a good mentor. So maybe it's somebody at a sister community or maybe you get connected in the local association. Um, but I think, you know, finding some good mentors are, are very helpful as you're kind of navigating um, this business, but there's no better business, in my opinion, than multifamily and being on site is so much fun. So I would encourage everybody to to test it out. Yeah. And hope you stay in forever like all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing as Scott. I mean, I, I, I don't think in high school I said, you know, I'm going to paint apartments. I'm going to go be in the apartment industry. I didn't, you know, I, I, had, I had goals and dreams and and, and I was flexible enough that when I, I came into this industry, I, I stayed in it. And because same thing, like Scott said, it, it, it pays the bills and, it, and it's a lot of fun. It really is. You know, the, the different things you get to do every single day and the different adventures. And then 
having a mentor helps a, a ton as well. Like you said, Christy, I, I think that having a partner, having an ally, somebody that you can bounce ideas off of, or you can be able to collaborate with, and, you know, somebody to help you get that washing machine up the stairs or help you get that, that, that repair done quickly. I mean, those are the fun parts. Those are the things that, that I find great about this industry. And I, I've always been excited about it. And so staying flexible, having a great attitude and, and being excited about the potential. That, that's, that's what I would say. So. Well, thank you guys. I'll make sure to share this with our class in El Paso. Um, I'll, I'll be back with Nicole and Blaze for Hints from HR on uh, August 11th. And then Jason and I will be back here talking about training uh, on August 25th. So we'll hope we'll see you then. And thanks for joining us. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Bye.